Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keep Bruce Simple. So in today's video, I've got something really, really cool to show you guys that I've been working on for a little bit. And if you guys have watched my last two vlogs, you'd know that we've been tracking the progress of my Epistogramma Agassizii Fire Golds, and in particular, the progress of their breeding. So our female laid some eggs, and I've been watching her for the past, I think, week, just take care of these eggs and move the wriggles around the tank. And she's finally got some fry. So if you guys come on over to this aquarium with our pair in it, you can see we've got a male over here on the left hand side of the tank. Now, what he's been doing for the past week is guarding the whole area from these endler guppies that are up the top of the tank that I've added as a little tactic. These guys are my dither fish and he's been protecting the female from these harmless endler guppies up the top and patrolling the area and making sure no one gets near her. And the female is down this side here. Now she's actually in a terrible spot to be recorded because she's a very intelligent fish and she's been hiding herself from me up the back here. So she's behind this piece of driftwood. You can see there's a little bit of movement going on there but you're not gonna be able to see too much. So I'm gonna try and get some good B-roll but she's actually up the back there and she's finally got some little fry that she's taken out of her cave. So when I first suspected she had eggs, she was over where that male is now and she was under that piece of wood. She then moved the wrigglers up to the top of that piece of driftwood and then she moved the wrigglers over to this side of the aquarium behind all this guppy grass and algae. Now she's got the fry and now this is our time to shine. So I'm gonna take this fry out straight away. And what we're gonna do is attach a breeder box to this aquarium. So we've got the same water going into the breeder box and we'll add the fry to the breeder box and we'll try and get them to feed and we'll see how small they are because they could be very, very small and they might not be able to eat baby brine shrimp at this stage. So let's get that breeder box set up and let's try and get those fries stripped from the female. She's not gonna like us doing this. So we're gonna to have to be very careful to not stress her out so much so she doesn't start to eat them. Let's get this fry out. So to start off, I went ahead and moved some of that hardscape to the side to reveal where she'd been keeping the fry. And you can see here, we have a really good view of all the fry sitting down in that little crevice that she's made in some of that mom. So she's been storing a fry behind that piece of driftwood, which is very, very dwarf cichlid-like of her. And you'll find with breeding most of these dwarf cichlids that they do hide their fry very well. And they appear to be pretty intelligent when it comes to taking care of their fry. Anyway, so I went ahead and grabbed a little piece of airline tube and used it as a siphon to go down to the bottom of the tank and suck out all the fry as gently as I could. Now, obviously the female started to freak out a little bit. She didn't go too crazy though and start eating anything, but understandably because she's been working on these fry for about a week, she was very stressed and didn't enjoy me taking them away. However, we do have a solution for that that helped her to not be as stressed that you'll see later on. So after I'd finished removing all the fry from the tank, I then went ahead and set up a breeder box. Now, these breeder boxes are absolutely fantastic for these kind of things. I love to use them for dwarf cichlids. Normally I do have to make a few modifications and add a couple of pieces of sponge up the top to make sure nothing can climb out of the container and get back into the tank that it's attached to. I then went ahead and added our fry to our container and had a little bit of a look at them. At first inspection, the fry seemed a lot smaller than I thought they would be, and compared to other cichlids that I've previously bred in the past, they're very, very small, about the same size as the German Blue Ram fry. So I was wondering whether these guys would be able to eat some baby brine shrimp. So I went over to my baby brine shrimp hatcheries, disassembled one, and harvested some baby brine shrimp to attempt to feed to them. I went ahead and fed these guys, and I took a good look at them while I was feeding them, and I only added a little bit of baby brine shrimp in case they couldn't eat them, so that they wouldn't foul up the water when they eventually passed away. And when I was looking at the fry, I noticed that they couldn't really eat them because their mouths were too small. Now obviously I needed some kind of smaller food because otherwise these guys would obviously die, and I was kind of scheming between two foods. It was either going to be some powdered foods, or it was going to be some infusoria, and of course I went with the infusoria. So I went over to my infusoria kit, grabbed a decent cup of it out, and poured it into our container. I couldn't really see these guys eating it and that's probably because the infusoria is so small and I don't think that these guys are actually eating it this size yet. So the infusoria is a great option for them because it's going to remain in the breeder box until it's eventually consumed by the fry. So you can't really add too much infusoria and it's a really good option, especially if you can only feed your fish once or twice a day. So I added a bunch of that and I think that that's going to do the trick. Okay, so we've just wrapped that up and we've got all of our little tiny epistogrammas in here. Now I've done a little count up and I think we've got about 70 of them. Now I'm not too sure how many of these we're gonna be able to get through to adulthood. Hopefully we get all of them through, you know, every now and then you do get casualties, especially when they're small. So right now we're feeding them infusoria and we're also feeding them baby brine shrimp and I'm gonna obviously keep you guys updated with their progress over the next couple of days. And I'm sure that because they're a cichlid, they're gonna put on a lot of size, but I'm absolutely stoked to finally have some of these guys in the fish room. I've been wanting to breed them since I first got them about a year ago and I didn't have success with that first pair so it's really nice to finally have some of these fry and yeah it's just super satisfying so I hope you guys can feel some of that satisfaction through me also just because I know everyone's gonna be wondering how the neon tetra is going if you come over here and have a look inside of this box 
you can see that our Neon Tetras still haven't become free swimming and they haven't developed eyes yet. So they're still the same as the last video, but they're gonna develop eyes within the next 48 hours. And then we're gonna be able to see how we can go about raising these guys up and getting them on a the baby brine shrimp and then growing them out fully. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think we're just gonna keep them in this tub and we're gonna see whether we can't like maybe take this back to the fish room with the fry in it, attach an air stone, feed them infusoria. So yeah, we'll just track the progress of that over the next couple of days. So I guess that's it for now and I'll catch up with you guys a bit later. Okay, so the following day I came back into the fish room and I had a look at the fry hoping to see some really good news and luckily we did. The fry are doing fantastic. They've actually been eating a ton of infusoria and I actually couldn't find any in there. Now, as for baby brine shrimp, I don't think they're actually eating them yet. I think they're gonna probably start eating them tomorrow after they put on a bit more size. So I've been continually feeding them some infusoria to make sure that they do get enough food to grow. I haven't seen any casualties, which is really, really good. These guys, normally when they get to this size, they're pretty reliable, especially if you have a good food source. So I wasn't too worried about that, but it's really good to have some confirmation that we're not gonna have that issue. Now, something really interesting and something that I thought might happen is the female's been up and around the breeder box and she thinks she's taking care of the fry. Now, this is obviously gonna stop her from having another batch of fry and that's actually okay in my opinion. I don't really need a ton of these guys in the fish room and I'd rather her take a little bit of a rest and put on some more weight before she goes and tries to create another huge spawn again. So if she can just mimic taking care of the fry and sit there and watch them all day and not be able to do anything but still think she's doing something, I'm entirely happy with that. So that's a little bit of an interesting observation and it's actually helped her a little bit to not be as stressed because she does think she's taking care of the fry. So that's really good. Some more good news in the fish room is if you come over to this Dark Knight breeding tank, we have a pair of these Dark Knight rams that I did breed myself. And these guys I've been trying to breed for a little bit. Now I haven't had a massive amount of success with my rams. I've been trying to get all my rams to take care of their fry and I've only had success with a couple of pairs doing that. So I'd like to switch my method back to rearing the fry myself. And I'm gonna be experimenting with that in future vlogs. You can see here this tank, I don't really like this tank too much because it's very, very dark and it's really hard to get good footage of the fish. But this male here is sitting on top of a clutch of eggs and he's guarding them. now. We're going to be taking these eggs out and trying to hatch them ourselves. The reason we're doing this is because that way we can actually fit more pairs of rams into a single tank and we'll be able to get more spawns and we'll be able to actually rear up some more fry and get more turnover with that. Another good thing about this is it'll also allow us to have some more tank space for other projects and other grow out space for more of these fry. So I went ahead and grabbed one of my favorite Kmart tubs, the four liter Kmart tubs that I've been using for a ton of stuff. I filled it up with some of their tank water. I then took the pot out from the mail and you can see here that he's still trying to remain on that pot. I then put the pot in the container. I then took it over to my hatching shelf, added a couple of drops of methylene blue and left it. You can see here that we have quite a few fertile eggs. You can also see some of those eggs have turned white and that's because those eggs aren't fertilized. Now, I've gotten to these eggs a little bit late and these eggs have actually already started to form some fungus. So I'm guessing that the eggs around them are gonna form some fungus and I was in a little bit of a rush and I just left those in there and this is just gonna be a trial batch. So I'm not too sure how I'm gonna go about doing this. So we'll stay tuned for that in a future video. Lastly, if we come back and have a look at our Neon Tetra Fry, you can see here that they've actually started to form into little tiny fish. So now they finally have eyes, they have little fins as well, and there is heaps of them throughout this tub. Now, these guys aren't ready to eat yet. I will be feeding them in a future vlog and I'll be experimenting with that and showing you guys how I go about doing that. I'm not too sure if I'm gonna have success. This is quite a crucial part of the entire breeding process. So hopefully we can have a little bit of luck and success with this and create some sort of method that works really well for raising these guys up. But as of this point in time, they're definitely not ready to eat and we're gonna have to leave them for a future video. So I guess that's everything that I wanted to show you guys in this video. Thank you so much for watching it. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.